big a deal is it really that the two candidates on a presidential ticket agree with each other or that they even have any idea what the other one is doing? Late last week, the Bush administration decided to remove North Korea from the list of state sponsors of terror. On Friday night, John McCain responded by releasing a statement expressing disappointment with the decision. He said he was not at all convinced that the decision was good for America's interests. Apparently, Governor Palin didn't get the memo about that because by the following day on Saturday, Palin had this curious exchange with reporters. Do you have any reaction to the uh, decision to take uh, North Korea off the list of terrorists? Well, Condoleezza Rice, of course, having um, worked on this strategy for quite some time, I have faith in her that uh, they're making this wise decision. Wise decision? Palin spokeswoman Tracy Schmidt earned her keep this weekend doing the necessary gymnastics to explain the apparent total 180 degree difference in position between the two candidates. Quote, Governor Palin's position is identical to Senator McCain's. She believes Secretary Rice and the Bush administration are wise to pursue diplomacy, and that is what she meant. Uh, except that McCain's rejection of Rice's decision was just about the opposite of faith in her wise decision. Good marks for effort, poor marks for believability. Add that to Palin's contradiction of McCain on Pakistan policy and her response to McCain's pulling out of Michigan, which was an email reportedly asking, quote, oh, come on, do we have to? What it all adds up to is the GOP having a maverick problem on their ticket. Columnist Bill Kristol suggested in the New York Times this morning that McCain should, quote, fire his campaign and junk the whole thing and start over start over with all the repair the campaign apparently needs? How do you immediately regain the unconditional support of Republican intelligentsia like George Will, David Brooks, Mike Murphy, Charles Krauthammer, Kathleen Parker? And what about the rank and file party officials who are running a little tepid lately? Former Wisconsin Governor Tommy Thompson was asked this weekend if he's happy with the McCain campaign in his home state. Thompson responded, quote, no, I don't know who is. Florida Governor Charlie Crist skipped a McCain football rally to go to Disney World and told the Miami Herald that when it comes to getting McCain elected, quote, when I have time to help, I'll try to do that. Ouch. Even McCain's favorite surrogate, Mitt Romney, now says that McCain needs to, quote, establish an economic vision that is able to convince the American people that he really knows how to strengthen the economy. Not exactly a ringing endorsement. Do you want more? One more. Red State co-founder Joshua Trevino says that he just took a pass on voting for McCain-Palin as well. He wrote, quote, do I believe in the National Republican Party? Not in the slightest. Joining us from Washington, David Frum, former speechwriter for President Bush, columnist for the National Review Online, and a fellow at the American Enterprise Institute. Mr. Frum, it's a real pleasure to have you here. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. You have publicly stated some reservations about John McCain and some criticisms of the way his campaign has run, even though you've also said that you will vote for him. Um, One quote I wanted to ask you about. You said um, that those who press this Ayers, William Ayers line of attack, are whipping Republicans and conservatives into a fury that's going to be very hard to calm after November. What do you mean by that in in that word fury? Well, I think you were talking... um through much of the show about the matter of tone in our politics. Um, And yet, I think we are seeing an intensification of some of the ugliness of tone um, that has been a feature of American politics in the past eight years. I mean, the show, unfortunately, is itself an example of of that problem uh, with its heavy sarcasm and and sneering and its disregard for a lot of the substantive issues that that really are important. Um, And I would hate to see Republicans go probably into opposition sustaining this terrible cycle of uh, unseriousness about politics, about turning it into a spectator sport. The party is going to have some important rebuilding to do. It's going to have to do that in an intelligent way. And we're all going to have to do better than we've been doing, including in the past 40 minutes. Do you think that my tone on this show is equivalent to people calling Barack Obama uh, somebody who pals around with terrorists, people yelling from this, people yelling from the audience at McCain Palin rallies, bomb Obama, kill him, off with his head, traitor? Do you are you accusing me of of, of, of an equivalence in tone? <laughs> I don't think that's an important question. I think the question is, given the small plate of responsibility that you personally have, how do you manage that responsibility? The fact that other people fail in other ways is not an excuse for you failing in your way. But you did just you did just say it's the it's it's the same thing that you're seeing the same thing from this show in the last forty minutes. I worry about that. 
They yeah, no, I, and I think from. we all, we, we all, so I, I hope that my party, as it probably goes into opposition, will do better. Um, and I, I hope that when we are looking at, in the next cycle of politics that we will see that the, the quality of discussion is more thoughtful, um, that the substance is more important, and that questions like the, um, whether or not North Korea is a terrorist state and belongs on that list can be discussed on their merits and not on what they tell us about the gamesmanship of politics. The thought, on the thoughtfulness issue, though, I wonder if that I, I wonder if part of the problem in the way that we haven't moved through these things, we de- we decry them on all sides. People left, right, and center complain about the tone in politics. But I sense also that there's a devotion to coming up with a sort of false equivalence. The idea that bringing up John McCain's experience in the Keating Five, for example, is somehow equivalent to calling Barack Obama somebody who pals around with terrorists. You saying that yeah. my tone on this show, sarcasm, being playful, the way that I approach issues would be somehow equivalent to the McCain campaign, I'm guessing, saying they don't want to talk about the economy. I, I don't see those things I, I, as equivalent. I'm just suggesting, I, I'm just suggesting I, the line is often attributed to Mahatma Gandhi, I don't know if it's really his, that, that we should be the change we want to see or that we say we want to see. Um, and so if we want to have a more intelligent, more grown-up politics, and I, I think we all say that, then we ought to do it. Um, and if we're given the opportunity to do it, we, we should do it. I mean, that, that you raised a very interesting point about uh, these, uh, the question of arming these militias in, in Afghanistan. Um, I, I was just there for uh, a little more than a week with a NATO mission. We spent a lot of time talking about that question. It's a really important question and a, and a really hard one. Um, and it does, it does demand uh, some of uh, the best thinking we can do uh, because th- there is a war going on that... Um, the United States is it's a commitment, it's a war, it's not going well. We've got a major financial crisis. And I absolutely um, am concerned and unhappy about the kind of campaign my party has been running. And I'm doing my best uh, to try to raise the tone, my little best, um, and to urge that we do better. We talk more substantively. I think we should all do that. It would be better for, it would be better for everyone. I didn't intend for my interview with you to be about this, but because you raised it, I feel like I've got to talk to you about it. Um, and I guess when you say that you want the, the discourse to be more grown up and more intelligent, I agree with you on intelligent. I don't necessarily agree with you on grown up. I think there's, a room, there's room for all sorts of different kinds of discourse, including satire, including um, teasing, including humor. Uh, there's a lot of different ways to talk about stuff, and Americans absorb information in a lot of different ways. But I do think there's something qualitatively different about threats of violence and about accusations yeah. well, of if, if, accusations John, that people are un-American or that they would sell out their country. If John McCain were making for, threats of violence, that would. If John McCain were making threats of violence, that would, that would be really bad. But what? Um, but, what uh, if, it, does a candidate standing at a podium, who, when somebody in the audience at a political rally responds to their rhetoric by saying "kill him," does the candidate not have an op- a, a responsibility there to stop mid-sentence, whatever they're doing, and say, "You know what? This is America. We don't do it that way." And where's the Secret Service? Well, here's what I would guess. I wasn't there, and I, I, um, as as you know, there's some controversy about whether what, whether that was exactly what the person said. But you're the candidate. Um, you're in this huge bowl of sixteen thousand people, or whatever it is. You can't hear what they're saying. Um, you read about it in the newspapers the same day um, as anybody else. And I think you know John uh, John McCain. You know has. Tr- tried to dial, dial it back. I agree. A lot of unfortunate things have been said by people associated with the campaign. There have been invocations. Um, and the, the McCain campaign is doing a non-substantive job and, and doing a lot of politics of, of cultural resentment. That's all true. Um, and uh, they're going to pay a heavy price uh, in November. But unfortunately, when you run a bad campaign, it isn't the candidate, and the candidate does pay, but the country pays. Uh, and we are going to be moving into a situation where we are likely going to have a Democratic president. We are certainly going to have a Democratic Congress, maybe with an expanded majority, and that opens the way to some uh, uh, to some potentially very destructive changes, both at home and abroad. Um, there are. Uh, there's a financial crisis that can be used as an opportunity to build a much bigger state than most Americans, I think, want. Um, they're signing up for something quite blind. Um, and in the same way, internationally, um, there, uh, there are some real dangers out there that are real, whether we um, jerk them. I, I, you know, I complain to a lot of people in my party that they don't want to see the truths about the party's problems. But it's also true that there are people on the Democratic side who don't want to see the truths about the threats to America in the world.
Well, I couldn't disagree with you more about the Democrats uh, not seeing threats in the same way that Republicans do. I think that that's been uh, an accusation sort of leveled at liberals specifically and at Democrats for a long time without uh, much evidence. But well, I well, look, well, if you, t- if you yeah. took it seriously, you'd invite Paul Wolfowitz on to talk about why, why does he believe that indeed America has to reinvest more in modernizing its nuclear arsenal rather than just making jokes about it. Well, you know, making jokes about it is if, important. If it were important to you. Well, making jokes about it if is it were imp- important. Hold, can you hold on a second? Just just one second. Making jokes about it is part of the way that I am talking about it. If I believed that Paul Wolfowitz would come on this show, I absolutely would ask him. At your suggestion, I will. The fact that the John McCain campaign in all of the weeks that I've been on the air has made one person available once for three minutes to me doesn't make me uh, inspired about those prospects. But uh, I understand that I understand that you feel well, frustrated. You guys have here. a symbiotic relationship. Why? You guys have a symbiotic relationship of negativity. I just don't think that what we do on the show is at all equivalent to people yelling kill him from the audience of camp of political rallies. But I appreciate that rhetorically you're trying to make the point of equivalence. I just couldn't disagree with you more strongly. I hope you enjoyed being on the show anyway, and thanks for doing it. Thank you.